I'm talking about the principle of electricity and magnetism here, by the way, when I say feminine. Feminine is magnetic and masculine is electric, but it goes back and forth. So um, that day is powerful for that reason. It's very powerful, just as switches all your circuitry around. It's the middle of that. It, well, no, well, well, 11 is um, a handover date from one of the deacons, right? In astrology, I'll just do this quickly and then we'll, we'll get stuck into it. <laughs> well, you've got your 12 signs, right? You've got your 12 signs, but they're not, um, they're not in line with the, the months. For instance, you've got March the 21st over here for Aries, March the 21st. Right? Uh, that's when Aries begins, but April starts over here, April the 1st. The 1st. So that's the first deacon, the first 10 days of Aries. Then from the 1st of April to the 10th, you've got the second deacon of Aries. Then from the 10th to the 20th, you have the third deacon. Th that, that is a handover date of the energy. The single digit numbers, this deacon, the middle deacon, is the one that is uncontaminated from the energy of the, the cusp, the neighbouring sign. Right? That's the, that's, they're the pure ones. One to ten. They are the pure ones. I've got a brother who's the eighth of November. He's a pure scorpion. Pure Scorpio. You can, just, you can just see it. And we look so alike, we look like twins. Now, how can that be? Because I'm Aries because of Mars, the ruler of both of them. And now I've, in my same family, I've got two Librans and they have the Venetian features. They've got Venus. My sister and my brother, they look like they're twins and me and my scorpion brother look like twins. If you look in your family and you look at your brothers, what sign they are, you will see that they have the trait of that sign. I'll explain that because it's very important. But these are the pure ones and the 11th is the handover oh, in, into the next deacon which has contamination from the neighbouring sign. Yeah. yeah. And the closer they get to the 20th, the more contaminated, more cusp they are. And believe you me, it's very strong numbers if you're born on 19th, 20th, 21st or 22nd. Very powerful. All right, let's go. Yes, I do. Okay, so where we left off was the science. We understood a little bit better the uh, solar system, didn't we? The day, the year, and the great year. We understand them much better. Much, much better. Polarity of day and night, the enemy being the night. If you had to choose between day and night to do all your stuff, you know, write letters to your friends, um, uh, grow a garden, which would you choose if you had to be stuck in either one of those? If the sun stopped, everything stopped and, and we just got stuck where we were, would you have day or would you have night? Yeah. Both will kill you because if you're in the day all the time facing the sun, it'll be a desert within 30, 30 days. And night will kill you, you'll freeze to death and you'll die. We need both of them. They're both good and they're both evil. The sun can kill you in the desert, but the sun is your source of vitality and life. Without it, you are nothing. So you see that good and evil is not really good and evil. It's, it's, it's in principle. It's, it's the, the principle of resistance. As the light comes out from the furnaces, the suns, that light has to have some resistance to be able to produce forms. Without it, it doesn't. It can't. And everything in the universe is electric and magnetic. Everything. Electricity contracts and magnetism and, and electricity contracts and, and gravitates and magnetism radiates. And that's it. And take it from the genius Walter Russell because that is what he teaches. 
He teaches in this book that there is nothing that God, there's no tool outside of electricity that God uses to make everything that exists. This guy was a genius. He was not uh, as known as his um, contemporaries as uh, uh, Einstein and, and uh, all of those guys. He lived around their time. He's sculpted presidents of the United States and he's painted their portraits and he's been their advisors and he's been there, in there, and he's recognised. And that's what he says. And he explains that in this book. I, I believe if you want to understand physics, please, please try and read this or check him out on YouTube. There's a few good videos about his simple theory of electric, electricity and magnetism. And there's also a website called Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts. Uh, either in, info or com or net. But anyway, Thunderbolts are the people who are... Um, they're not your typical herd consensus scientists and they're teaching exactly these things in harmony with Velikovsky and all the other geniuses that all there is out there is electric, electricity and its effect, magnetism, male and female. Okay? Now, so we understood those that. that. So we like the day because we can see things and we don't bump into things. So the sun as Plato said, is the cause of our, is, is the, the cause of our knowledge and, and wisdom. Because without it, we can't see the things that give us the objects and the nature. The nature shows itself in a nakedness when the sun comes up and we can see it. We can see how flowers are and birds and, and all the symbiotic relationships and cycles that are out there, beautiful forms, flowers and flora and fauna. And so it's a teacher. Now, and it's the teacher of the sense of the, the sight. It's the ruler of the eyes. The ruler of the ears is Saturn. That's why you have earrings, because Saturn has rings. And Saturn is the god of law. And so you're instructed to put those earrings on your ears and to listen to the law of Saturn, because Saturn is the king of the whole system. He takes 30 years to go around the sun, then Jupiter's 12 years, then Mars is about two, then you place the sun in the middle here with 365 days. And this is the Ptolema Ptolemaic order, by the way, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, sun, Venus, Mercury, moon. Venus takes 225 days, Mercury's 88 days, and the moon is, we, we'd give it a, a number of 28 days. So Saturn rules. You put those earrings on and listen to the law of Saturn. It's the best law and that's why they use the Latin language in court because it's the language of Saturn. And if you read the Ennead of Virgil, the famous words where he says, you Latin people, we know, we Latins, that we are the children of Saturn. Saturn is Latin. And, and that's why law is in Latin. And those earrings are on the ear. And I'll show you how later how the sun rules the eyes and his twin brother, the evil Satan, rules the ears. Through one you see and through one you hear. Because they are the two senses that you will, you will always want to keep. If you were asked which senses would you like to... If you had to lose four, which one would you keep? What would you say? Sight. Yeah? Second? Hearing. Yes. Yes. Well, this is the point. What we see is only a very, very, very thin slither of the spectrum. Hearing is the same but you can actually see with your ears. Correct. And you can hear also with your sight. You can flip them over. So, but you're beginning to understand the two religions that are out there, philosophy fighting against theology. The five senses. These senses are fighting for our attention. The sun gives us that thin slither, but then there's all that 
ultraviolet and all that ultraviolet and um, infra, red, infra meaning below and hello, does that not harmonise with our chakras? See, ultraviolet, gamma rays, very fast and very slow, fearful waves down here, your radio. Isn't it? Radio and microwaves and all those sub, yeah? And then the high ones, what have you got up here? You've got ultraviolet, can anyone help me? Gamma rays, x-rays are there, right? So this sun is the lucent one. Um, his true name is Lucifer. Because he deceives you with the eyes. And believe me, it's a deception what you see. It's all a deception. It's maya. It's an illusion. It's real. Yes. It's, it, it's real because our minds tell us it's real. And we have this light and darkness, up and down, black and white, good and evil. And it's all a theatre. Because it's in our mind. It's not in God's mind. There's no evil. So, so you, you begin to see it when you're dealing with the lower mind and the chakras below, then they want to keep you down there. They want to keep you down there. Power, sex and survival. They don't want to get you into the heart chakra. Their doctrines will keep you down. You will not ascend. You will not be saved if you go to church. Uh, and the reason they do that is because they're using... There's a, it's a trick. Lucifer works only here. Saturn works out here, his twin brother, hearing. Which is better? The religion of seeing or the religion of hearing? It is. It is. It's the feminine. Because it's Saturn. And Saturn is, is magnetic. It's, it's feminine. All the planets are. Any magnetic body is feminine. And the sun being electric impregnates its particles. It's the impregnator. Just like when you put um, electricity into a, a rock or, or a magnetic energy and you magnetise it, that polarity of the, the current that you've put into that rock stays forever. Can you use the oh, yes, I can. Sorry, you did say that before. Um, <coughs> now... And this, these are the two churches. This is, uh, this is, and that's the soul, the Christians, Christ. By the way, Lu it, the sun is lucent, Lucifer. It's Lucy in the sky with diamonds, the stars. It's Lucy. That's Lucy. But this is the deceiver. <laughs> Lucifer is a deceiver. And Saturn, the god of hearing, will teach you about the sixth sense. And the intuition, it's the feminine, right brain. And they've been at war forever. Cain and Abel, Horace and Set. And you're going to see how that works. It's beautiful how this works. Absolutely beautiful. Now, the only other thing I want to do, I'm sorry, we've really been, I've stu been stuck on the science here. And it's sort of more boring because the next part's the best stuff, really. Um, but I just want to do this before I go on, because I know I've just introduced to a lot of you about the platonic solids. So I know that I'm going to have to do a little bit more work here before we go into it, all right? This is physics. It's not hocus pocus. This is physics. When you talk about fire, earth, well, what's your, um, what's your sign? Are you a fire sign? And, and people listening in get horrified because don't talk about this devilish stuff, <laughs> astrology. This is disgusting. Don't contaminate me. It's science. It's pure science. Fire, air, earth and water correspond. I mean, I, I'd rather work with this than that because this, I've put them, my niece was supposed to have a big A1 of these for me. <laughs> and she failed. She rang this morning. She said, office works are closed. Sorry. But she was supposed to have a big one because I knew I'd have this problem. But... Let me use this. There it is again. Ether. Below ether is fire or suns. All the suns and the stars that you see. 
And from those stars come forth everything in the material world using either gas, liquid or solid forms. Because that's the only thing that atoms do. Atoms are God. That's what God is. God is atom. Atoms. He's not over there, you know. He's not detached and, and apart from the nature. Outside of it, he's not. It's all of it. This, that's really not correct to have male there. Um, it should be, it's, it's hermaphrodite. Yeah, that's not neutral. It's neutral. But, but, we, but you see it so often in Plutarch and Plotinus and all the Neoplatonic philosophers of the second century that refer to it as he. It's, it's, it's this problem that we have from the Greek language that has three genders and, and stuff like that. But it, th they don't teach that it is male or female, it, how we see it. It's the principle of electricity and magnetism. This is the, um, the, 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 sep the two male and, and female polarities of everything in existence. Everything. No. And yet again it is, really. It's, it's a whole, as uh, Walter Russell says, that, that beautiful everything that goes on that is electromagnetic is God having sex. It's sex. Um, now, the f good on you, God. <laughs> yes. It is space, yeah, as um, Democritus had it 2,500 years ago, and Empedocles and Pythagoras and Plato. Plato said that our solar system, here's, Christians have been telling us, oh, we just discovered 500 years ago that the sun is in the centre of the Milky Way, of the solar system, and it's not the Oeth. Well, they haven't read uh, Julian the Emperor of the 4th century, have they? Because he was the apostate. He was the one that tried to bring the world back after he's the nephew of Constantine the Great. Forty years after Constantine the Great, he tried to bring the world back to Christianity in 360 B BC, uh, um, CE. There's only 40 years after Christianity was made official and they started the bloodletting. My God, the pagans had to run for the hills and they pulled down those temples. They pulled them down. I've got a list pages long of all the dates starting from when Constantine got on the seat there with Christianity. This guy, if they didn't kill him, they were in a, he was in a, a war against the Persians. He was fighting Julian. He was in, in the front and his Christian sol sol soldiers from behind shot him, killed him. In three years, he brought the world back to paganism and he wrote in here that the sun is the centre of, of the solar system. So they don't read... It's a fib. It, it's, it's their fictional theatre. They're, they're um, um, falsifying history by making us think that we've only known in the last 500 years that the sun is the centre of the milk. Pythagoras and Plato said the sun is the burning altar around which all the chariots of the planets dance around. And here's Julian in his beautiful orations to the sun. Everything is to the sun. He wanted to bring us back to the sun knowledge because original Christians were called heliognostics, sun knowers. That's what an original Christian was called, a sun knower, a heliognostic. Because if you know the sun and you know the solar system, you will know the science which will teach you about you. Man, know thyself and you'll know all its gods and its universe. Here we have Julian. He says, as for the planets... It is manifest that dancing, as it were, round the sun, their motions, you know, I'm, I'm emphasising this because how many people like to tell you that? How many priests carry that next to their Bibles when they're in church saying, hey guys, we've always known that the sun is the centre of the Milky Way, of uh, the solar system. We've always known it. And it was only the fools that 
the literalist Christians that changed it around and said, no, it's the earth, because they didn't understand that the order of Saturn, Jupiter and Mars is the order of their orbits. So the one who has 30 years, Saturn, he, he's the ruler, he's the king, right? Now back to this science. <clears throat> These are the five platonic solids. There's only five shapes. You can sit on a computer for, from now till the rest of eternity and you can try and find a shape that will touch its edges inside a sphere like the platonic solids do, which I've showed you. We'll just have a look once more again for the meditative uh, benefits of it. There's the platonic solids. They are the only shapes that will fit inside a sphere. They are also called Pythagorean solids. And that is what all those atoms are doing. All of, all of these atoms. All of them. They will either... Carbon, that'll be carbon. Carbon will have six, will be a cube. And how do I know? What's the uh, atomic number of carbon? Six. 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 Six electrons, six neutrons and six protons. The mark of the man, <coughs> the mark of the man, 666, if you flat pack a hex and we are a carbon creature, you get a cross. The shape of every cathedral and Egyptian, uh, Egyptian uh, temple. You go down to um, Flinders Street and have a look at St. Paul's. Have a look at uh, uh, St. Patrick's. Have a look at St. Patrick's in uh, the Catholic Cathedral. Same shape as this. That's the hex. Chinese kanji. Japanese kanji for earth. Have you seen it? That's the Japanese kanji for earth. The cross. Carbon. 666. Six, six. That's a hex flat packed. Hex solid carbon. It's all science. So as those, those photons emanate from fire and then become particles and atoms and molecules, molecule, atom, particle, photon, that's how everything works. That's how the world of effects appears. Those beautiful photons dripping down and becoming more gross as they go down, just like a distillery. So when we come down, as Plato said, our bodies made of earth and water, we are 75% water, but the bones and the solid part of our body is what we call earth. For out of dust you came and out of dust you, sh you shall return. That's what it's talking about. These particles, these elements, carbon, a little bit of hydrogen, a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of nitrogen, a bit of other stuff there. You've got trace elements. But these are the main elements, these four. These four turn up everywhere. Four blood types. Four limbs. Four seasons. This is what it's all about, these beautiful four polarities. So you see the tetrahedron has four sides and it's light, it's the photon. The octahedron, spirit, has eight sides, it's the particle. Becomes an atom, becomes a molecule. The lowest degree of life is the molecule. This is the highest degree of life, the ether. So you see here the elements, the platonic solids, the state of matter. That's the states, the four states of matter. And the physics, the chemistry, that's our body. All organic forms. That's where I'm going to leave off with the science. And now we're going to get into the really, really juicy stuff. And I'm glad I've got this big, big board. I've, I've always worked with this one. This is going to be great. All right. So that was the boring science. But you did learn quite a bit, okay? The fundamentals of a lot of this stuff. You learnt it. I would suggest that you go and 
do some more, more studies on, on it too though because the more you meditate on this, the more you know yourself and knowing yourself is where all your power will be because you will discover that you are God. That's who you are. Inside our heart there is an atom and that is the centripetal atom that holds all of those other atoms which is a galaxy in itself centripetally together. And it's regulus. It's in the heart chakra. It's the heart chakra. It's the Christ. And that's who we are. This atom is the seed. We are the seed. We are in the middle kingdom. Here is the ether and here is the molecule and, and the mineral which goes up to the plant kingdom, then the animal kingdom, then the man. Man is in the middle. He's at the equator. And that's what the, they said. He's in the middle kingdom. And if you make it to this kingdom and you're, a, and you're an animal and you look down, you can see animals that are coming through like dogs. Have you seen how many, have, have you got a pet dog or a cat? How smart they are and how intelligent and they want to be like us. My dog just wants to be a human. She's amazing, amazing. Because they're looking up and, and we are gods to them. And these are gods to these and these are gods. The mineral is the lowest, the mineral kingdom, the four kingdoms. We're in the middle. This is a seed of a star. And the star is up here. The stars, you go through the astral, you go through the astral, then you get to the causal world. From the astral world to the... Um, um, what do the, how do the Hindus call it? But anyway, uh, our seven chakras are in here. Our seven chakras are in here. Then there are chakras above. And they are, this is hopefully how our soul, when we lose our bodies, our molecules, because that's what it is. Plato said that the earth is, the body that we have is called a soma. And the tomb that we go to is the sema. And he said it's the same word. We come from a womb and we go to a tomb. Same word. And that's why we have a tombstone because it, is look, it looks like the womb of your mother. Memorialising the fact that your spirit now has gone back and you don't have a bodily form anymore and there's the womb on the tomb. And he said it's the same word. We come down and we get a baptism of death, a baptism of earth. So as a Christian we get baptised with water because water is the universal solvent. It the, cleanses the defilement of the earth. Then, as John the Baptist said, the one coming after me will baptise with spirit and fire because we have to be baptised with spirit because spirit cleanses the water and this purges everything. This is the sun. We, go, we have to go through the sun. We have to go through the moon, moon, Mercury, Venus, sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn in order to get back to the cause. And that's the story of how all of this is going to unfold. I just want you to have a look at something before I draw my graph. Here is an ancient map. About 500 years old. Um, can you see the equator? You can straight through the middle and then you can see a sine wave. Can you see the sine wave? Now if you had your binoculars here today, you would see Aries over here. The little sign of the horns, just like the McDonald's you see down the road. You see the... The McDonald's, that's not an M for McDonald's. That's the horns of the ram. It's the symbol of Aries. And all of the symbols, BP, Shell Oil, I'll show you in a minute. They are all the sun and they are all the heroes up above. It's the stars. And as we get to know them, we'll get to know. It, it will be the beginning of understanding everything because it all focuses on the knowledge of the seven planets. Aries, that's the, first, the 21st of March. That's when everything begins. That's the start of the year. The Jews begin their year on the 21st of March. Aries, the Passover time. Nisan 14, they celebrate the Passover. I wonder why. Would it be because the sun has just passed over from the southern hemisphere of winter, winter, and it's passed over the equator? 
and then the Christians run along and celebrate Easter and the marriage of the lamb, Aries, because the Passover always happens in Aries. When the sun passes over out of Israel, um, out of Egypt, the Red Sea, because when the sun goes through September, the scales of Libra at the equinox, when the sine wave flips over from electricity to magnetism, when it goes through Libra and we go into the southern hemisphere, the trees that were green from the photosynthesis all of a sudden turn red. And so it's the Israelites going through the Red Sea. And you must come up out of the Red Sea in order to go into the promised land. As you're going to see in the fairy tales and in every storybook ever, ever. It's the story of the son, the hero, and as he climbs the holy mountain of God and reaches the 21st of June, Jerusalem, he rides in on two donkeys in procession. Why? Because the donkeys are in the sign of Gemini. There's two donkeys. And when the sun comes up in Gemini, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, the sun has come up on two donkeys into Jerusalem, summer, and that is the point of summer beginning. These are the summer months, Cancer, um, Leo, Virgo, and there's Libra. And so that would be the Passover. That's the start of the Jewish sacred year. And guess when the start of the Jewish secular year is? September the 21st. Right? Remember we said before, how can January the 1st mean anything? Well, here's March the 21st, June the 21st, September the 21st and December 21st. They, they are the four cardinal points. They are the four crucial days of the year. And the cross-quarter days are the ones that go in between those. <clears throat> there it is there. Twelve sections. That's the sky. And that's the path of the zodiac. And guess what? Rather than Aries being over here, they've got Pisces. Aries is over here. Does anyone know why that would have happened? Yes, because 2,000 years of processional slippage. We've been in Pisces for 2,000 years. That means on the 20, what simply it means, on the 21st of March, every year, Look behind the sun, what's the constellation there? And that's the sign we're in for 2,000 years. So this Passover of the sun, the equinoctial crossing on the 21st of March every year, has not been happening in Aries. It's been happening in Pisces for 2,000 years. And we're going into the age of Aquarius. Next you'll see Aquarius over here, and it'll begin in Aquarius. This does not change the science of astrology. I will explain why not later. But just, I've just pointed that out to you. I wanted you to see that. This begins with Pisces and the reason for it because they've made concession for procession. <laughs> hmm. uh, there's the oith and it's also 12 sections. I wonder why. So you don't notice this when you see these maps. You look at them and you go, oh boy, mm, that's the way they did it. Well, I'm just pointing these things out to you because you're going to see how it all connects in about, uh, about an hour and a half. <laughs> okay, so what we have is a beautiful big circle like this and we have an equator. I'm doing exactly what I see on those maps, okay? Here, that's the Earth. I'm going to put... I'm going to put the Tropic of Cancer up here, right? I'm putting it nice and high. It should be about here. It should be 23 and a half degrees north of the equator. You know why, don't you? 23 and a half degrees? Tilt of the earth. You understand the tilt of the earth? As we go around the sun, see the tilt of the earth? It's, the axis is tilted, so it's, the, the earth is like like that, <laughs> right? And it maintains that, that tilt as it goes around. So if the tilt's like that, if my head is the sun and this is the earth, it will go around like that and maintain that tilt. 
it'll go right around and that tilt will always be facing up that way. So if it's tilted that way, it goes around the sun like that and, and keeps that tilt. That's how the seasons happen. Simple as that. All right, without going, there's spring, Aries, summer, autumn, winter. Remember, it goes anti-clockwise. We go anti-clockwise around the sun. So there's the equal days, and that's the shortest and the longest. Obviously, this is January the, the 1st, around, or December, around December time, see? Okay? Now, <clears throat> what's this tropic? Capricorn. Capricorn, good. It is, it is. Beautiful. So you've got 47 degrees. Now that sine wave. Let's follow the sine wave. This is the sine wave that this sine wave that happens from March the 21st to March the 21st is the sine wave this is a fractal of the same sine wave that goes up and down to the neutrino, up to the, the galaxies and down to the neutrino, the smallest thing we know that exists, much smaller than the particles of an atom, that does this. It, all of it does this. Electric, magnetic, positive, negative, male, female. Good, evil. That's why they get this thing that the female is evil. It's not evil. It's just the opposite of this. But this one gets the designation of evil because of its association with winter and the night. The feminine energy has that association. It's magnetic. That's all it is. It must be there just like the male energy must be there. They both are there. In this world, sub-ether, the world of effects. Not here. Sorry? Well, exactly. Up here, you get to live. The opposite of live is evil. That's the devil. And the good is the God. Okay? That's the, the story of Jesus' kingdom and Satan's kingdom. Satan rules down here, Saturn, in Capricorn and Aquarius. He's the ruler of both of those. Jesus is the ruler of... The sun is the ruler of Leo. Because Leo is there. Now watch this. This is the, the amazing story that comes out of this. This is the story of all the myths, every single one of them. <clears throat> so we have lush green photosynthesis for, for this part. For this part, the summer part. There's spring, there's summer. Good. Oh, they're great. You can eat. You can grow things. Because longer days, shorter nights. Longer nights, shorter days. This guy is the bad equinox because he introduces you down and sends you down into hell. That's hell. That's heaven. Summer is heaven. Winter is hell. How do I know that? Well, because you need to know your Latin. Winter, in Latin, is... In ver no. Hell, just take away that V and replace it for a sound that is very, very similar. Inferno. Okay, hell is cold. That's hell. That's Tartarus. That's the pit. That's where Osiris rules. That's where Satan rules. Good planets rule up here. The sun and the moon. Cancer. The moon. Jesus and Mary Magdalene ruling in the kingdom of heaven. Abraham and Sarah in the promised land. This is the promised land flowing with milk and honey. 
the Milky Way runs between Taurus and Gemini. That's the milk. In Cancer, there's an asterism called the beehive. That's the honey. So when the sun is in these months from March to September, it is in the promised land, in the land of honey. So when they see Aries coming up in the east, they go, thank God, because the Passover is happening in the sign of the Lamb. And on Nisan the 14th on the full moon, it's the marriage of the, the, moon, the, the moon opposite the sun, the full moon in all her glory, Isis, being impregnated by the sun on the Nisan 14 when the Passover. And they celebrate it and they say, we are going into the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey and where you can grow and harvest in Virgo. These signs tell you about the agricultural year. They tell you about the gospel in the sky. They tell you what weather you're going to have below, what season it is. Why do you think Scorpio and Sagittarius and Libra are here? Libra judges the sun. Scorpio is the backbiter, November, winter. Sagittarius inflicts further punishment on the sun because the arrow of the, the centaur is pointing to December the 21st, the solstice, the shortest day of the year. The last day of Sagittarius is the 21st of December. The fall, autumn, the fall. That's why it's the fall, because the sun falls in these months. They know these signs in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> when they see the sun coming up behind Scorpio, it's the backbiter. He bites, he backbites the sun. He waits for him to be judged in the scales. Bang, November, you're dead. Middle day, Halloween, the cross quarter days. Equinox, solstice. Equinox, solstice. Longest day of the year, shortest day of the year. Equal days. 12 hours of light, 12 hours of night. Uh, well, equinox means just that. Equi, equal, nox is night. So night and day, basically. And there's only two of those days. Funny how the ancients knew about those days. How did they know that that day was the day when the sun splits? Did they have watches that, you know, clocks are like, bang, that's it. That's it. It's got to be today. Who was checking this stuff? How did they know? This science has come down to us from the golden age of 12,000 years ago when Egypt was teaching true Christianity. Christ is the sun. Jesus is the sun. Amen is the sun. Satan is the sun. And I'll show you that in a minute. Now you see, remember, this also represents the day and this represents the night. So we put 6 o'clock over here, 12 o'clock over here, 6 o'clock over here, and 12 o'clock midnight over here. Make sense? This is a 24-hour clock. And we're going to bring it around on itself next. And we're going to show you how the wheel works. Now, as I said to you, when the sun goes down here, everything turns red. So these six signs here of Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius... Uh, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces are the six bad months. These are the good months. These correspond to the Jewish menorah. This is the menorah of the Christians. They worship the kingdom of heaven with the star of David on the top. People say it represents, it's the hex. It represents Saturn. It does. David is Saturn. But it, it's also Toth, Mercury. Mercury sits here in Gemini. That's why they always put the Star of David. That, in anybody's book, is hermaphrodite. Male facing up and the womb of the woman facing down. That's feminine. That's masculine. That's a hermaphrodite. That's Mercury. That's why they have Star of David at the top there. And that's the Jewish menorah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven that correspond with the seven planets, the Elohim. The Elohim in Genesis chapter 1 say, let us make man in our image. Why do they make man in our image? Remember the, 
the patterns I showed you that, that they make in the heavens, remember? Well, all those patterns are Fibonacci. Fibonacci patterns. Now, my name's Bonacci, so Fibonacci, if you know who that is, that's 800 years ago. Leonardo Bonacci um, gave us his numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on, right? 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 and 2 is 3. 2 and 3 is 5. 3 and 5, 8. 8 and 5, 13. You follow me? Right? They, are, they grow at 1.618. That's what you call phi. You know, you've got pi, that, which is 3.141. Well, this is phi. This is the other transcendental number. There's two transcendental numbers. They never zero out. You got this, goes for, this number goes forever, just like pi. It goes forever. They're not from this dimension. They're transcendental numbers, right? That's the golden mean. The golden mean. The yes, my belly button. One, 1.618. Why? Because everything in the solar system is creating those little circles and forms to basically inflict a pattern of 1.618 on this Earth. Therefore, everything has those proportions. There it is. And pine cone, DNA, the DNA, 21 angstroms across the short wave and 34 the long wave. Well, that's just Fibonacci numbers because 22, uh, 8 and 13 is um, 21 and the next number is 34. Well, that's what the DNA, I just read the angstroms of the DNA. So the DNA are doing this spiral. This is not a spiral, by the way. It's a helix. It's, multi it's not two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional. It's going around like this, this sine wave. It's spiral. It's like a torus, like the energy flowing through our bodies. We've got this tor torus field, okay? Leonardo da Vinci knew about it. The Mona Lisa. The creator knew about it because our eyes, our face, all the... The, the positions of the organs and, and whatnot on the face and everything have Fibonacci uh, harmonics ratios. There's the Milky Way galaxy. The galaxies are doing it. Spiralling out with a Fibonacci number, with a Fibonacci spiral. It's everywhere. As I said, the neutrino is doing it. There's the apple, the pentagram in the apple. There it is there. That's one. That's 1.618. It's everywhere in nature. Fibonacci. There's the spiral of the Fibonacci spiral. And there's the cross that, remember that cross I showed you? Our furniture is made by Fibonacci, the best furniture. The Renaissance furniture of Italy, all Fibonacci. All the artists were using Fibonacci proportions. Where did they get it from? Pyramids. Pyramids all, is all phi. It's all phi. All of it. There it is there. Two. Three. Two, three, five, five, eight, eight. Count all the keys. Thirteen. Petruvian man. Photographers know where to place their objects with the Fibonacci spiral to get a perfect photo. There is a woman in the ocean flicking her hair back and they've superimposed the Fibonacci grid over the top of that. And guess what? Perfect Fibonacci. Flick back of the hair and the, the, the spiral is, fits right over the top of that. Plants are doing it. There's your DNA. Okay. Stock market, yes. You're going to see some interesting stuff about the stock market here, man. Why they crash, crash the stock market always here when Libra hands over to Scorpio. The 19th of October, two stock market crashes happened here and one happened four days later on the 25th of October. The three stock market crashes of history, the biggest ones, 29, 2007 and 87. Right there. Right? <coughs> Osama bin Laden dead day. 
um, May the 1st. May the 1st is when the Illuminati was founded. It's when Hitler was announced to be ki have been killed. Osama bin Laden now on that particular day. We had the royal wedding. We had the beatification of Pope John Paul. Uh, and people didn't, don't realise that. Why would you beatify the Pope within, is it three years he died? That's impossible. It's got to be centuries. Usually the, the Catholic Church takes hundreds of years to beatify, which is, I think beatification is the next step to sainthood. Is it? Okay. This guy, they rushed it in and quickly tell everybody about Osama bin Laden and have a royal wedding because we're going to beatify him. There's a lot of stuff going on. Now, I haven't begun with that because I'm going to do that later. But see this spiral? This is when the naughty stuff happens. This is when the good stuff happens. This is summer. This is winter. This is day. This is night. All right? Six in the morning. Now, when you know these two wheels, that this represents the day and this represents the year, okay, when you understand that, you only need one more thing and you are a complete astrologer. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Because, <clears throat> as I said, it, that is a fractal of everything. When you superimpose the man here, notice the head of the man in Aries. There's Aries. Gem Taurus is the pointing to here. Gemini is pointing to the arms. When you put the man there, and the man in the sky is Adam. Adam Kadmon in Jewish Kabbalah. Adam Kadmon is this man here, Aries. The arms, the chest, the heart, the, the belly. Virgo is the belly. That's why you got any Virgos here. You probably notice they have a little, nice little pot belly. My father's a Virgo and he's got his pot belly. He's always had this belly. We'd always laugh at him. Well, it turns out, well, he's a Virgo. You're a <laughs> muscly Virgo. <laughs> but no, that's it. Aryans have got prominent heads, hence my buff head. <laughs> but, but they do. Taurians have got thick necks. I've picked Taurians by their neck. In fact, once I couldn't... Um, well, I didn't guess this Taur uh, Taurus, uh, Taurian, and, and, he, and he said, um, I'm the one with the, the thick neck. And I said, oh, okay, that's Taurus. Now, how did he know to say that? He doesn't know this. He didn't know this. I know that. But he, he said, I'm the, we have the thick necks. You see how things are getting around? Uh, expressions? I'm a Sagittarius, not the funny guy, so... Yes. Have a look at your Sagittarian friends. They've got these... The males, they've got these big thighs. Have a look at Geminis, their long arms, or the way they move their arms. It's amazing. Their arms are like air. Have a look at the Leos that get around like, you know, and the Cancerians, because they're summer. It's hot. No, this is how it works. Arians are the babies of the Zodiac. Why are they the babies? Well, that's the sun is a baby here. He's a little boy, and he's climbing because... He has to climb the mountain to get to his enthronement. And the enthronement is always here on the summer solstice because that's when the sun, the sun is the biggest. Just like his bride, the bride, Mary Magdalene. New moon, full moon. That's the glory of the moon. That's the bleeding of the moon. In the menstruation cycle, that's where the bleeding happens. New moon. That's your cycle, ladies. It takes 14 days for the egg to mature and if it's fertilised at this point you'll have a son or child 270 days later otherwise 14 days later it'll bleed that's the new moon you can't see it because it's in between you and the sun so you can't see the new moon but you can see that one because that is always opposite the sun the full moon always when the sun is setting in the west then you'll see the full moon coming up in the east they have to be so the sun's enthronement is here, Ra, Horus, Ra, Set. Well, wow, interesting. The war of Set, Horus and Set, Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, all the twins in the Bible, Jesus and Satan. Satan rules Capricorn. Satan kills Jesus because Jesus 
This is cardinal fire. This is fixed fire where the sun lives. The sun rules Leo. And this is mutable fire, Sagittarius. So the fire cycle, of which there is none in this quadrant here, is killed by Saturn. He is the killer on the 21st of December, which is T Saint Tammuz Day. And Tammuz is Osiris, and Osiris is Saturn, the brother of Jesus, the son who kills him. See how it works? It's amazing. It's scary to think that they've literalized this story. It's pure poetry of the heavens. So, you see we have March the 21st here. We have June the 21st, Prince William's birthday. December the 21st and September the 21st. Everything starts here. Everything. Remember, it's the head. It's where the, the fractal begins. It, it all starts with cardinal fire because cardinal fire is the first part of the fire. Cardinal is the beginning signs. They are the door openers. Cardo in Latin means hinge. When the sun passes those days, it crosses over those days or passes over. That's why there are four crucifixions in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Because they are crucifixions. Crossovers. The sun is crossing over. It's being crucified on the cross of matter. What's that the symbol of? The earth. earth. The symbol of the earth? Um, oh, okay. Do you think they knew something? It's this science. It all goes back to the science. That's the symbol for the sun. Okay? Target? Just you watch how many symbols of those Illuminati corporations have to do with the sun. I'll show you. That's going to scare you. <laughs> it's scary. It really is scary what they're doing sublim subliminally. What I've done here is I've basically made that bigger, that uh, graph that we had in the first one, right? There's the Tropic of Cancer and there's the Tropic of Capricorn, okay? And there's the equator, really. You can just extend it. You understand what I've done? So there's your summer and there's your winter, your good and your evil. Remember we had hell down here, inferno, inverno, okay? Now... First thing I want to bring to your attention here, we're going to, we're going to have, I'm going to wrap seven wheels around here. I'm going to wrap the body of the man. The head is always here. And then the Pisces touch the back of the head in mutable water, thick cardinal fire. This is the starting line. <coughs> and I'll show you why. Now, Interesting, fire in the head, water in the feet. We are a magnet. We are a magnet. We're magnetic. And we've, obviously, the fire must connect to the air, <coughs> the fire in the head of Aries, to the air above the head, as the philosophers say, and the water in Pisces is, is always connecting to the earth. That's the magnetic polarisation, okay? That's how you've got to see. So we're going to, I'm going to wrap the body around here and I'm going to show you how all the stars, there's always, Taurus has always got its three other star um, constellations. Orion is he in here. Orion, the famous Orion, the Lamb of God that fights with the dragon. There's a red star in Scorpion, that's the dragon. Every opposition, that's Herod and John the Baptist, that's the Lamb and that's the fiery dragon, the four fixed points. Check these oppositions. There's a reason they're there, <laughs> all right? There's a reason why Libra is the opposite of Aries. They both have to do with equinoxes, and you'll see why. There's a reason why Cancer has a unicorn in it, opposite to the Capricorn. The corns that are there, the unicorn, 
which is also the cancer, the crab, and the scarab, the beetle, is also here. Just like here, we have the eagle and the serpent and the scorpion. Here we have three animals also in these two signs. One of them is the unicorn opposite the Capricorn because these are the corns, the solstices. Right? Now, <coughs> Orion is here. What you're going to notice as we go through the body is all those stars correspond with the stars in your body. So it's, it's all the same thing. Uh, no, they're not the deacons, but everyone has, for instance, in Gemini, you've got Canis Menor and Canis Major belong to this sector. Here in Aries, I think you've got um, Perseus is in here. Perseus is one of the, the stars, but there's the, um, there's the 36 uh, outer constellations, right, along with the constellations of the zodiac. There was 36 of them, so you need to know those ones too. You don't need to know them, but you, as you learn, you realise Orion is in there. It's important to know that Orion is in, and you'll see why later, okay? But um, I'm going to wrap the body around here. In a minute, we're going to do the agricultural year, and we're going to see if, the, if those signs, we're going to pay attention and see if any of those signs happen to correspond with the uh, planets, uh, with the seasons below. I wonder. I wonder why the bull is there in April. Let's see if we can work this out. I'm going to wrap 70 of these wheels around this and you will see the tarot is here. <coughs> the tarot is the 12 cards. There's 22 cards in the tarot. And the 10 bodies including the Earth, Uranus and Neptune. That's, this is what the tarot is based on, guys. Kabbalah is in here. The Hindu system is in here. The Mayan system is in here. Everything is in here. Right? The tarot, which comes from the Torah, which means the wheel. This is the Torah. This is everything. It's Aphrodite's belt. It's King Arthur and the round table. There's just 12 knights. That would be Lancelot. Um, or the guy with the spear. Sagittarius would be Lancelot. This is the Maseroth of the Bible. This is Jesus going through the circuit of Galilee because when you look in your Strong's Concordance and you check Galilee, it tells you it's the circuit of the Maseroth, the circuit of the Zodiac. So it's telling you. <laughs> it's there. <coughs> they can't hide it. And it's getting exposed more and more by the day. Anyway, the tarot, those 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with the moon, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, make 22 cards. That's what the tarot is based on. Everything is based on the, seven, on the heroes of our solar system. Everything. And the 12 helpers. Let's have a look at how that happens. Right, what I've got is, um, I've got the astronomer to Caesar, um, no, the, the astronomer to Napoleon Bonaparte, <coughs> Volney, 200 years ago. And this is the agricultural year, how they saw it, and they've always seen it like this. Aries, the wool of the lamb is the springtime, the blossom of the trees. Taurus is the bull that tells you to take your bull out and put a plough behind it and plough now and plant now in the fixed earth. Because the sun, Jesus, is going to turn water into wine. This is the wine season. Ask any Greek or Italian. September. Wine season, Virgo's the bread. The bread and the wine, the symbols of Christianity, the bread and the fish, which is the 2,000 years which we have come from. We have, this is the last 2,000 years of history. We are now entering the age of Aquarius. We are right here at the threshold of the age of Aquarius. Before that, here's Rome, ancient Rome. Before that was the age of Aries. Mars rules Aries. Jupiter has been ruling Pisces. Pisces. Jupiter has been ruling over mutable water and we've been getting baptised in water for 2,000 years because this is the baptism that we are having. The race has been baptised in water for 2,000 years. Jupiterian, Piscean, mutable water. We are going into spirit next. <coughs> We're jumping up from water to spirit in Aquarius. Okay? 
Now keep that in mind later because that's another one of the wheels that I'm going to do. Gemini, the twins. Twin sheep, twin goats. Look around, it's spring. It's reproduction. This is the symbol of reproduction. These symbols symbolise the springtime. The golden age, silver, bronze, iron. Cancer, the backward moving, the sideways moving animal. Right, when the sun reaches June the 21st, that solstice, that golden day, the longest day of the year. When it reaches, it is enthroned in its kingdom. It's Ra. Remember the moon, new moon, and she climbs and she comes to quarter. The sun, we celebrate the, the Passover of the Lamb here. The Israelites who have come out of the Red Sea, because this is red, remember? Everything is red here. And if you remember <coughs> our little... Uh, friend here and you remember that the head of the man is over there in Aries and you go down like this with the chakra system you'll find that Scorpio the red um, you see that orange that's Scorpio here or thereabouts probably there it starts turning orange here and red there's a reason for it up there is as below our father in heavens hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? Well, it means <coughs> as above, so below. And it is. We are walking, our 12 tribes of Israel, Aries, all the way down to Pisces. And by the way, that's the Jewish tribe because that's the lion, Leo, <coughs> of the tribe of Judah. That's Leo. <coughs> now, as we are walking in this, through this world, we are the 12 tribes of Israel. And we are walking through the Red Sea, which is our blood. And scientists know that in a laboratory, there is no difference between our blood and seawater, chemically. That's a fact. Well, that's the Red Sea and the 12 Israelites. They are in your body, the 12 tribes of Israel, and they are in this room. I'm an Aryan. I'm of one of the tribes. I am cardinal fire. That's how my character is. The sun has given me those attributes because I was born here on the 24th of March, just after the Passover. And so I get cardinal fire. I get a male a male, this is male, this is female, this is male. I get an electric polarity, which means all you people who have these signs, male signs of fire and air, fire and air, fire and air, all those signs are male. Now, if any of you females there are in those signs, you are electrically polarised. You're not magnetically polarised, which means uh, you'll be less receptive to other people's ideas. Whereas the magnetic people, like your Cancers and your Scorpios, they easily absorb other people's ideas because they're magnetic and their polarisation is to receive. So knowing that, how easy it would be if we knew that about our children at kindergarten, we would know, we'll put all the electrics over there and all the magnetics over there and teach them differently. But they don't want to do that, do they? They just want to tell them how to Learn how to buy stuff and get a job. Boy, that's a noble concept. And that's all they teach children. Consume. Let's create a consumer society, shall we? And just all we do is just consume things. That's that's what we've got. It's sick. It's really sick. We have to turn our backs on it. You even have to use credit. Yes. So we go through this and we see that the crab is there because the crab is a sideways walking creature and it must descend. The goat likes to climb mountains. That's why the goat's there. I'm not making this up. I'm going to read this from various sources. Hopefully I have the time. So I'd love to be able to read this from the books where I got all this because none of this is my opinion. None of this is any of my ideas. You have to read a lot. <laughs> but um, so hopefully I can 
read that because you'll love it. You'll love it. Leo, <clears throat> these are the dog days. Sirius comes up behind the sun around July and you have those two or three weeks called the dog days. This is mid-summer here, August the 1st, mid-summer, cross-quarter days. Pay attention to those cross-quarter days because they go exactly in the middle of these equinoxes and solstices, exactly in the middle, and they are the midpoints. That's mid-summer, mid-fall, mid-winter, mid-spring. That's the start of spring, mid-spring. Good question. Um, the point is, people, it, no, it doesn't change this at all because the pulse, remember that sine wave that goes through your body, I showed you the serpent going through Libra, the kidneys, and then at the feet, magnetic feet. That's going through you every hour, excuse me, every minute, every microsecond, and every year of your life in fractals. It's always happening. Well, it's happening in our solar system, and it starts at March the 21st for the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. Regardless, it's the position when, it, when, Aries, when Aries happens here, when the Mar that's March the 21st, the spring equinox, that's the solstice. It goes, it goes anti-clockwise, remember, our Earth. It maintains that tilt and gives us the four seasons. These are the cardinal points of the four seasons, but in the middle of them is the middle of the season. So that's why you see fixed fire here. Of course you can have fixed fire over here. You can't have fixed fire over there, it's winter. You see how it's based on science? The sun rules Leo. He's the boy of hot. Opposite him is Saturn's kingdom, Aquarius, the boy of cold, Satan, Jesus. He rules the underworld. He is Neptune, Saturn. He is Osiris, the god of the underworld. Horus is the guy of the horizon. Horus is the guy of the horizon. Horus. Ra is up here because that's when the sun radiates the most. The rays of the sun are so powerful in summer. This is when Hercules mounts his throne, when Achilles comes back to get his throne. This is when Jesus enters Jerusalem on the two donkeys, Asinellus Borealis and Asinellus Australis, the two twin donkeys. That's why you, you read the Gospels and you hear about Jesus riding into Jerusalem on two donkeys. How do you do that? <laughs> wait, hang on, wait. <laughs> Slow down. Because look, as the sun strolls in, this is a procession. This is Jesus and they're all... They've got the palms in their hands, Palm Sunday and all these, because it's, the sun is coming to be enthroned. But then the sun must also be betrayed. And he does get betrayed by the three betrayers. There's no fire in this quadrant room. Oh, sorry, now, well, that's even worse, this really betrayal of, of the sun. Why? Because in astrology... Every planet has a ruling house, uh, a detriment, a house of detriment. That's the ruling house of the sun. This is the house of its detriment. Down here, the sun suffers. It's winter. That's what, it's all based on nature. And this is astrology, people. It's based on pure nature. This will help you understand astrology. It also has its fall and exaltation. Well, now that we know about this sine wave, now that we know this sine wave and we know what the sine wave is, the sine wave is basically, it's everywhere. It's in the yin and yang symbol. It's in the figure eight. It's in the letter S. It's the swastika, it's the cross, it's, it's all the religious symbols, all of them. Is it also based on the Trinity? Yes. 
eight the, the number of eternity because there's no, where do you start? Where do you start, right? It comes from this. And when you understand this and you realise that this, the sine wave is doing this, you will understand why the planets have all these things. If the sun rules here and its detriment is here, where would the sun's exaltation and fall be? So we've got its established its ruling house and we've established its house of detriment because it makes sense, doesn't it? Here is midwinter, right? Where would it, it exalt? Does anyone know from their studying astrology? Just from your studying astrology, which is the sign of the exaltation of the sun? It's going up, you're right. Aries, thank you. This is the exaltation. This is the fall of the sun, Libra. Now, what do we know about Satan, his evil twin brother, who teaches us to listen to the church of listening instead of the church of seeing? Well, the twin brother over here, this is his ruling house, Aquarius. This is the detriment of Leo. This is the exaltation, uh, sorry, of, we're talking about Saturn, sorry. This is the ruling house of Saturn, Satan, Jesus' brother, his twin brother. This is the detriment of Saturn. This is the exaltation of Saturn. This is the fall. So you see, it is science that there is an opposition in nature. It's pure science. He's the father of electricity. He is the father and the ruler and the god of magnetism. <coughs> Volnay. Thus the Ethiopian of Thebes named stars of inundation, inundation or Aquarius, those stars under which the Nile began to overflow, stars of the ox or the bull, those under which they began to plough, well, I just told you that. You can see the season and you can see the stars are there as a sign. And guess what Genesis chapter um, 1 verse 12 says, and I have placed the luminaries and the stars and the sun in the sky to serve as signs and for seasons, for signs and for seasons. And then in Job, God says, can you tell forth the Maseroth? Do you know how to tell forth the Maseroth? Can you tell me? Do you know what it means when the sun is in Taurus? Because if you don't, you're a fool. Well, back then, anyway. I mean, I know we've lost this now. And it's sad. But, I mean, we're all hungering to learn this. I'm hungering to learn it every day. Um, but it's our true science. As above, so below. You see the ball, you go to plough. And it's, it's agriculturally, this is set in stone. Biologically, it's set in stone. Annually, when, you, when I show you through the Gospels, I'm going gonna, gonna to point out about 20 or 30 scriptures here and I'm going to blow your mind with how they correspond with all these Halloween and you know, the Passover, Easter and all of these uh, religious festivals. Blow your mind. That's absolutely stuff that will blow your mind. <clears throat> Those, un and people go to church to get, just believe in Jesus, brothers. Yes. Why? Well, why would you believe something when you can know it? I mean, in order to speak English, how much belief do you need in it? You, none. Because you know it. So in order to speak a language, you need to know it. This is a language. And they're not even teaching that. They are the blind leading the blind. And that's why they say, you must be like sheep, brothers. Why would they ask you to be sheep-like? <laughs> well, you ask a Christian and it says, because sheep are humble and they follow the shepherd. <clears throat> but the priest knows why. Because he wants to fleece you. And he wants to pull the wool over your eyes. And lead you like a lamb to the slaughter, like you said. That's why... <laughs> They are the masters, but they're doing their job. They're evil because they serve the magnetic energy of Saturn, the black sun. This is the black sun. You've heard about the black sun, haven't you? It's Saturn. And this is the, the sun. Jesus, Lucifer. 
the deceiver. Uranus also is here and, um, and Pluto and, and Neptune, but they are in a different octave. This is the first octave of planets and this is how it works. Ruling house of the sun, ruling house of the moon. And then in descending order you have Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and then Saturn at the outer, in the cold. That's the hot. He shares, he gives the most heat and love and light and life. Notice I said those three L's because he is L, Elios, and he is the Lord. Believe you me, you should place the E before the L if you want to start understanding the Bible and you will see that he gives us love, life, and light. Uh, that's who it is. The feathered serpent. There it is on the Jehovah's Witness Assembly Hall in uh, New Jersey. The Egyptian sun disk. El, the sun. Elios. They're telling you the name. Look at the Christians. Ooh, living hope, Jesus. And what do they put there? Jesus. That's Jesus. It's a creature. The Son is a creature. And he is our blessed saviour. Because when we enter into its consciousness, which is heart chakra and above consciousness, we're saved. You don't believe in the fiction anymore. There's no priest that can say, how about coming to my church and, and I'll teach you about God the deceivers and they won't teach you about the truth they put it in your face that is yes yes our positive savior the sun because you must come to the sun to be saved you cannot get to the father unless you are saved by the sun because it's that baptism in the pineal gland of fire and hence the fire above the head of the Christians at Pentecost cross quarter day this is when Pentecost happens, when in Acts, in the book of Acts, they get a baptism of fire and they're speaking in tongues. That's the baptism of your pineal gland just gone. It's just exploded and you're in the Christ consciousness and saved. That's what salvation is. <coughs> now, um, back to our little friend Volney. And those under which the animal, driven from the desert by thirst, appeared on the banks of the Nile, stars of the sheaf, or of the, ver the harvest virgin, those of the reaping season, the stars of the lamb, stars of the two kids, those under which these precious animals were brought forth, and thus were, was resolved the first part of the difficulty. In the same manner, he named the stars of the crab those where the sun, having arrived at the tropic, retreated by a slow retrograde motion like the crab or cancer. He named the stars of the wild goat or Capricorn those where the sun, having reached the highest point in the annuary tract, rests at the summit of the hoary gnomon and imitates the goat who delights to climb the summit of the rocks. The goat has the job to climb up. He named the stars of the balance or Libra those where the days and nights being equal seemed in equilibrium like that instrument. The stars of the scorpion those where the certain periodical winds bring vapours burning like the venom of the scorpion. Now, I've got a, a few other sources, but I've done them in other presentations um, and I don't want to repeat information. I like to bring new information out all the time, but I can go on and I can read many of these stories where Aries is the spring, the blossom, plough, generation, sliding down of the sun, midsummer, there is the sun, Virgo, 
holding the sheaf of grain in her hands and the virgins go out to pick the harvest, the bread season. Libra, why is there always an association with the wine press and vengeance? In the Bible it says, and I shall press them in the, vine, the wine press of my anger. Well, it's the sun in his burning anger and he turns those grapes into wine and they are pressed every year. And that's why in one of the Gospels, after the crucifixion, the last thing Jesus says, it is finished. Here he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Eli, Eli, why have you forsaken me? Because it's the coldest, shortest day of the year. Here he says, God, why do you struggle against me? And then God, every gospel says something different. In fact, Porphyry, Porphyry busted the Christians through 1,700 years ago. He busted them. They, they burned all of Perf Porphyry's books because he was teaching that you have to be vegetarian to get to God. He was, because, and of course, that's going to disturb a lot of these uh, meat industries in, that are run by the corporations and telling you that you've got to get iron and protein from your meat, which your body can't do. Simply can't do it. Simple as that, of course. Yeah, and, and these guys, Porphyry, Plutarch, Pythagoras, Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci, Plato, who else was a vegetarian? And who else do they poo-poo and tell you, oh, they're from the devil if you go there? It's like I was saying before, you don't need to believe in English to communicate in English. You need to know it. And that's the reason why um, with astrology, the people that, that, that poo-poo it, it's a language. If you don't know it, you don't have to believe in it. So we'll, hence, why would they... The question is, is futile. Uh, do you believe in astrology? This guy busted them. He says, and you, sh you ought to read the Christians as the Romans saw them. Great book. Celsus, a hundred years before Porphyry, they burned his books. These are the fragmentary remains. We get these remains from this one, from Origen, the church father, and these fragmentary remains from other scraps on Porphyry. Thank God we've got these. Thank God we've got Julian's book, The Emperor. Remember I told you about him 40 years after Constantine? Against the Galileans. He calls them, he says, it's, I am now going to expose their fiction to you. That's how he opens his words. Opening words. Julian, poor man, what he tried to do when he saw that Christian onslaught. The time has come, this is the opening words, for me to say for the benefit of all how I discovered beyond any doubt that the stories of the Galileans are the inventions of deceivers and tricksters. For these men seduce people into thinking that their gruesome story is the truth by appealing to the part of the soul that loves what is simple and childish. It's the stupid mind of the lower. The Octavius of Marcus Minucius, Felix, Celsus, Julian against the Galileans. I beg you to read these. these. These guys were busted back then. And I'm busting them now. <laughs> but he said, your Gospels, why does the sun say something different every, every Gospel? Why does he say it is finished here? Well, because it's the wine season. They, just previous to him saying that, they gave him vinegar. So the sun was given vinegar at this time because when you squeeze those grapes and squeeze them and squeeze them and squeeze them and squeeze them and squeeze them, and squeeze them eventually you're going to sip that wine and it's vinegar and in Egypt when that moment came here on judgment day, hello, the Jews call this judgment day, judgment, the wine, he would taste that ooh, and he would stand at the temple and he would raise his glass and say, it is finished. It's finished. The wine's finished. Let's start again. Thank you, son, for the bread and the wine. Jesus, he feeds the masses and they celebrate the bread and the wine. That's what it means. It is finished. Why have you forsaken me? Why do you struggle against me? Anyway, it's in here. I'll, I can read that to you later. I'm not going to look for that because I want to sort of plough through this before we um, have to uh, wind it up there. Um, now, so, 
we see here that the story goes like this. The hero always begins his, his path here on the 25th of December. Do you know why the 25th of December? Yes. When the sun reaches this point, for four days, there's a period where the sun does not move on the horizon. The sun is doing this. On the horizon, there's 47 degrees on the horizon. So it's going summer, autumn, winter, spring. Summer, autumn, winter, spring. So you see you've got summer over here and winter over here. These points are the solstices. Now, when the sun reaches there, and you can watch this on the horizon, you can see the, it's summer, the sun's cruising along here. The sun is walking on water. Because when you, see, when you see the sun come up and, and setting, it's setting, you know, it sets over here at summer and then climbs back in winter six months later. It's beautiful. And you can see it and it stops for three days. That's from the 21st to the 25th. That's why the 25th of December is the birthday of the Jesus, the yes, Jesus, the sun. It's the sun. It's the day of the unconquered sun because even though Satan kills him and Sagittarius is spearing him, there's Sagittarius's arrow and he is killed and pierced on the heel he is still the unconquered son. You cannot conquer him. And there is the hero dying with the... There's Hercules. He has the spear, the dagger in his Achilles heel. There he is there. See the arrow? The hero, the son, always dies in the heel. Hell, inverno, inferno. That's the heel. Hell and the heel. And all the L words. Israel. Elder in the congregation. Uh, chapel. Cathedral. Evangel. Um, the elite. That's the elder. It's all elitist. It's all male patriarchy and hierarchy, ruling people by seducing them into powers, positions of authority. Authority is a no-no word in this universe. <coughs> Sorry? Number five. Yes, I'll show you that later. It's the fifth letter, it's the E, and it's the fifth element. Right? It's the ethereal or quintessential. See, so what does quintessential mean? The, the fifth essence. Well, that's it. Ethereal. Ether, ethereal is quintessential. It's the fifth ether. It's the one that all the philosophers are looking for. It's the manna. It's the sweet honey from the gods. It's the nectar. Ether. When you get baptized with this, you're rocking and rolling. You really, really are. That's, that's what this guy calls the Saviour has come to visit. Listen to the Saviour. And he talks at length about meat and how bad it is for humans. It's the molecule. You're eating the animal. Your brothers, Plutarch, said, how did we come into a world that eats its brothers that are incarnating like we and will be of our race one day, humans? And we turn around and we slit their throats. And they called it the tyranny of the senses because there's so much pleasure in eating flesh. Sorry? Well, and we are. We are their gods. It's like the angels, which we're going to be next, are our gods. So would that ether also be like attached um, to the tyranny? Yes, it is. Yes. Um, now, so he always, even though he's defeated by Saturn, the uh, God of hearing. And why would you hear? Why would he be the God of hearing? Remember we, said we established that Saturn is hearing, the rings of Saturn? Well, have a look where he is, in the dark. Because remember, we've got 6 o'clock over here, 12 o'clock over here, 6 and 12. This is a 24-hour clock. 
sunrise, sunset, midday, midnight, equal, equal, equinoxes, equinox, solstice, solstice, longest and shortest day, from the northern hemisphere, of course. It's not southern. All this science is from the northern hemisphere. So please transport yourselves there because that's where 90% of civilization has been anyway, really, when you think of it. So it's focused on there, but it's not focused on that. It's not, it's not northern hemisphere centered. It has to do with this day. This is the beginning of everything. How do I know? All right. Well, I've already, we've put the head there. The head is the head. It's funny, isn't it? We have these expressions like uh, hot-headed and cold feet. Always got cold feet. Always hot-headed. Well, feet are cold. This is cold. That's the coldest part of the day. Just before sunrise is the coldest part of the day. Cold feet. Hot head. Well, the body starts there. This used to be called primus. Primus secundus. Tertius, quartus, quintus, sextus, sept. September's the seventh month. It's not the ninth month because it all starts here. This is the start of the Jewish year. Right ascension. Does anyone know what right ascension is? Please, astronomers. RA is the celestial equivalent of longitude. See these lines? Where do we get our longitude from? Where does it start? We know that latitude starts from the equator, so that's 15 degrees north of the equator, that's 30 degrees north of the equator, uh, 35, right? It's easy to tell because you've got an equator. It's right there, splitting. But what which line splits north-south? Greenwich. Greenwich. That is Greenwich in the sky at zero degrees Aries. It used to be the pyramid. It used to be Paris. It's only recent that it's gone to Greenwich, but it doesn't matter. As long as we agree to where it is and we've established it, it's there. Right ascension is here. Interesting. So when you say, oh, have a look with your telescope, uh, 30 degrees right ascension. You're looking there. Right? They don't use degrees, they use hours and minutes anyway, but it doesn't matter. So you've got right ascension takes care of uh, the longitude and declination takes care of the latitude. And it, it starts there. Over here begi begins the, mar the month April. Does anyone know what Apri means in Latin? Any Italians? No? Aprire. Aprire. You open the door. It means open. Why would that mean open? Because here is, excuse me, here is where the opening is to the kingdom of Ra, Raymond, the radiator, the regal one. That's how you say king in Italian. That's how you say king in Egyptian. Roma. Ra and Om. Om. Om is the sun. <coughs> Paris. For Isis. What do you see in the heart of Paris on the little island, the cathedral to Notre Dame, to Our Lady? London, El On Don. That's three names for the sun. Just like Israel, Isis, Ra, and Elohim. Abraham, Sarah, who come from Brahma and Saraswati. I mean, <laughs> aren't people, you know, I mean, aren't people thinking? Uh, hang on a minute, we've got. Brahma and Sara Swati and you just go Abraham and Sarah. It's all there. It's all the one religion that was handed down to us in a very, very difficult 
and very highly veiled system so that these pearls shall not be thrown to swine because <laughs> that's what they were doing. It's not to keep people stupid, but it's to keep, it was originally done to keep people honest. If you're a fool and you want to come in, uh, into the, the, the mystery school and learn all these wonderful secrets and abuse the power, because you can get a lot of power from this, when you know which is your ruling sign, I know that mine is the sun because my ascendant is Leo. You see? How many people who know astrology didn't even, don't know that? We should know that. Yes, it's the ascendant. That's why it's so important to know when you were born, the minute and the second. And they've stopped us doing that in the hospitals. It's just, get that baby out, slap him, inject him with some immunizations, and quickly, we need a birth certificate signed. We need to uh, inform quickly, get him in the system. Come on, hurry up. And they get a spot fee of $2,000 for doing that. Did you know that? Yes, because they want you in the system straight away. They don't want you to know this, this information. You've got to know the time you were born, the time of your birth. <laughs> um, look, there's, there's, there's only about a two-hour window. You have to work within a two-hour window because, because these signs, they go through they go through, the sun goes through that. <coughs> Remember, this is six o'clock. So if you're born, if you're born, let's say like me, 24th of March, and you're born, um, let's say, at seven o'clock in the morning, you'll be born here. Because Aries rules every day from here to here, six to eight. So you've got a two hour window to work out where your ascendant is, so you know your ruling sign. And you're supposed to be devoted to that God these are the gods that you're supposed to be devoted to because once you devote yourself to these gods who are yours, mine is the sun and my numerology is one, so it's the sun. has to be. Um, when you know and you devote yourself to these gods and this science, the holy science, and you become like the true Christians, the heliognostics, the knowers of the sun, then you will, you will, you will say goodbye to them one day because you will be of a higher order than these because that's where we came from. We come from a way higher order than any of these pretenders. This is Jehovah, yod heh vah -he, of the of the, uh, the Jews. Don't try and tell Christians that because they don't want to know it because they're not interested in the truth. They're interested in their fiction. yod heh vah -he is fire, air, earth and water. That's why they call him the creator. You have created all things because it is the created this is the effect of the cause. This is the created creator, the demiurge. And they are planetary bodies. That's all they are, just atoms. Because we are living in the great God. And they are the bones of the God. Those stars we see are the atoms of the God. And we are in the middle kingdom. The man is here. The mineral, the, uh, the plant, the animal, the man is in the middle kingdom. And... That star that I told you before, Regulus in the heart, the ch heart chakra, that is your Christ. That's why you always see Christ with his heart exposed. What's he doing with his heart on his chest? It, it's telling you that it's, that's where the Christ is, in the heart. And we are the seed of stars. You, I'm looking at a seed of a star. That's a star. That's a star. You are a star. You are a star. You are a star. And I mean a star. You will be like Michael, our archangel. That's Michael. That's Gabriel. Uh, sorry, that's Gabriel. That's Raphael. That's Samael. Ariel. And, well, that's Michael. Anyway. Um, and that's what we are. And that's why we call our children youngsters. And we give them little stars when they... A gold star. Be as good as gold. Gold? Because it's the sun. That's why we have gold coins, silver coins and bronze coins. It's gold, silver, bronze, hermaphrodite, tin and copper. I usually have my little ink and eagle here. Sorry, and it's made of bronze. And I have that there to do the, the coming in the middle.
Yes, the father, the ether, in Kabbalah, Kitha. Kitha is up here, right? So that's the father. And then you point to the heart, the sun, that's the fire. And then you do the shoulders, that's Gemini, the air, spirit. Now, see, it's all there. I'm just pointing it to you. You already know all of this. You're just remembering it now. And Plato said we are here to experience anamnesis, the remembering, the reconstituting of what we all know. You are all high priests and high... You are all exquisite knowers of this esoteric, esoteric truth. You are just remembering it. And I'm just helping you along the way and just pointing to you and showing you where everything is. It's there. Like a jeweler would put a clock together. You wouldn't know how to, would you? You just see those little... <laughs> little springs and little cogs and little bits of jewels and they make a watch out of it and you can tell your time. And you seen those little ladies' clocks? Handmade? Who makes those cogs? I want to pat him on the back. <laughs> Who's making all the beautiful computers that we do? It's so powerful. We are powerful. We're really powerful. <laughs> and we are gods. And instead of telling our little children in school... We're going to call you youngsters, ch children, because you are young stars and you are the seeds of a star. How about that, Kinder kindergarten teacher? Do you think we're going to get any, any of that? No, because you send them to a state school to be brainwashed. And this is the knowledge they're running from. They're running from this. Try and tell a priest about all this, about yod hair va hair. Can I get a water, please, um, if you don't mind? Sorry. Or yeah, I'm really getting dry. I've finished all my water. No worries. Yes. 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 Yes, it is you'll find that 90% of the time they harmonise with your numerology. Absolutely. I'm looking for my fairy tales book because I've, I've remembered that I was told you that I was going to wrap seven wonderful circles around here. From now on, when you go out there and you see Aries and, and Taurus and everything, you're going to understand what they mean. And you're going to see the story of the hero, how these signs tell you that he becomes a hero, like the moon in her glory at full moon. And all the planets, they all have their their ruling house, their detriment, their fall and their exaltation. And it's all scientific. This is science. Cardinal fire. Well, everything is... See this cardinal, fixed and mutable? What's the, what does that mean? Well, cardinal is the beginning, that's the middle and that's the end energy, to put it simply. Just imagine a, a fire hose. Creator, Creator, preserver, preserver destroyer, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Growth, birth, growth, decay. G-O-D. What's G-O-D? God. Uh, would that be generation, operation and degeneration or dissolution? Yes, it would. Or destruction. Or destruction. Imagine a fire hose, right? It's very powerful water at the start. Very powerful. And that's what the cardinal signs are. Very powerful people. They move in a straight line, mate. Believe me, you want to see when I'm going somewhere. <laughs> I don't like anyone in my way. And it's, it's my nature. It's my God. Aries is there. Mars is doing things to me. He's making me martial. Making me martial. And you find that Aryans are good fighters. Like Steven Seagal, Jackie Chan. Great Aryans. People like that. Electric people. Eddie Murphy. Just ah, woof, a lot of electricity because it's cardinal fire. It's, it's at the, the bottom, it's at the birth part. It's not at the growth or the decay. The decay will be mutable, mutating. These signs have always got two. Two twins, two fish, man, horse, and Virgo is Mercury, which is the coming together of man and woman. These are the, the and, and the fixed ones, 
They tell another story. They tell the fixed qualities of the person. These people are fixed, very fixed. That's why these people have got the big necks. <laughs> um, earthy, Taurian, solid, like a bull. Oh, you beauty. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I was going to ask, um, all the constellations, um, we go through the ages the other way. Yes, uh, in procession. Why is Aquarius uh, related to the, the cold Saturn? Golden age. Yeah, good point, um, but that's a bit difficult, but it has to do with the, with the spiral, right? We, every 24,000 years, we don't go around and go back to the same point in evolution. We've gone up the spiral, right? And, and precession goes backward, but the day and the sine wave goes forward because we are going anti-clockwise uh, clockwise around Sirius. That's why. If we get a pole shift, in next year, which is quite possible going to happen as we go through the, the galactic plane, because that's what happens, you, you do, is a reversal of polarity, right? If that happens, then this science has to be readjusted, recalibrated, and it has been recalibrated. This is the science of now and of the last, say, 30 or 40,000 years. And it was given to us by we ourselves. When we were gods, then we fell to demigods, then we fell to heroes, and then we fell to the human consciousness. And we are about to be downloaded with a massive load of consciousness soon. Are you finding that you're starting to work things out more and see things and see the, the massive gap between you and the consumer out there? The guy that's going to the footy and Collingwood's going to beat Carlton, you know, and he's at the pub and you see them. You walk past the pub and you see them. They're all drinking and they're sitting out smoking outside there and they're all eating and drinking and not taking any note until the flood came and swept them all away. That's what it's talking about. So Christians are right when they read the holy science and the prophecies and the eschatology that is in there. There's eschatology in the Bible, the science of the end. Because, and we're living in the end time, the time of the harvest. Virgo. See, Pisces. It's been the age of Pisces for 2,000 years, but look opposite. It's also been Virgo. Now we are going to Aquarius, and guess who? The heart chakra. We're going from there to there, courtesy of the Son, Christ Jesus. This is the, the Christ chakra, and this is the baptism. And this is when Jesus says, I'll be knocking on your door. If you open the door, we shall have an evening meal. That's the Saviour that uh, Sri Yukteswar is talking about in the Holy Science. Treat him well when he visits because he will teach you all things via the labyrinth, the Holy Science, the Temple of David, the Tabernacle of Moses in the wilderness. This is everything, King Arthur's Round Table. It's all the myths and all the fairy tales. Okay, so with Cardinal, that's at the start of the hose, then you can, you can imagine that beautiful curve of the hose, that beautiful form, you can imagine that being fixed. And then mutable is all these drops. It fragments, disappears. And what about a little baby, cardinal, a mature man standing up erect, fixed, and then a little old man on his three, mutable, right? There's many, there's many ways you can look at it, but it's God. It's the start, the middle, and the end, and everything does it. So everything comes, and this is the Holy Trinity, by the way. This is the Trinity. It's the triplicity. Fire, fire, and fire triplicity. Water, water, and water. I've colour-coded that, aren't I? Clever. See? Blue water, blue water, blue water. Woo! <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, and so they are the triplicity. And, and guess what? They all have their turn. Water has its turn to be cardinal, to be fixed, to be mutable. Right? Do you see that? And notice where fire dwells. Fire dwells here, cardinal fire, 6 a.m., sunrise. Hello? It has to be there. Because that's the, well, the sun coming up as a little boy, man, old man, dead. That's how they said it. Plutarch, all the philosophers. The, the up cycle, the down cycle. And then here you've got the doors to the kingdom of heaven and the door to the kingdom of hell. The two trees in the Garden of Eden. The tree of life, because the cycle is everlasting and longer days, shorter nights. The tree to the knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil. 
Once you eat from this tree, on the day you eat from it, you shall positively die. And then God had to make skins for Adam and Eve because they're going down into winter outside of the Garden of Eden. The land flowing with milk. Milky Way galaxy. Interesting. Between Scorpio and Sagittarius. Would they be pointing at something? Yes. If you find Scorpio the most magnificent constellation in the stars bar none, it looks like a scorpion. It actually does look like a scorpion, like that. And its tail, and this Sagittarius' arrow, that's the centre of the Milky Way galaxy, right there. November the 22nd, May the 22nd. We're coming to that in seven days. The crossing. That's, that's when, those are the most powerful days, that's when you kill JFK on the 22nd of uh, November, if you want to kill the big rooster, as the French assassins who killed him said. Did you see the documentary? where those French assassin, assassins came out and said, we did it. It's on YouTube. Check it out. Who killed JFK? When they got the letter, when they got the job, and they, they said, all right, they said to the CIA guy, well, uh, of course, run by George Bush. <laughs> Killers, murderers, they killed John Lennon. <laughs> when he said, uh, he asked the question, uh, who am I, who's the job? They said, le grand coq, the big rooster, the big boy, the biggest. That means... JFK. Nice job. That's when you do it. Uh, now, fairy tales. And you're going to see that there's days here that are designated for certain things. You want to start a war? You do it on the 20th. That's when they invaded Lib Libya. On the eve of the equinox before you go into Aries, Mars, to be marshaled to fight your wars. That's when George Bush started his war in Iraq in 2003 on March the 20th, same day. And then they finished it conveniently on May Day. Osama bin Laden's dead, Hitler's dead. Hmm, let's start the Illuminati Day. Six weeks. They famously call it the Six Week War, rubbing it in our noses, telling us that we have a sacrifice. This is the month of that sacrifice. You fight people and kill people because they're killers. They are killers. You want to see the... Um, it's, it's all run by the Vatican and the Zionist Jews, if you want to know who's... It's the Mother Church and the Father Church. Church of Satan and the Church of Jesus, the Jewish Church and the Christian Church. That's what they are, and it's run by the Jews. You need to listen to Rabbi Finkelstein on the documentary, The Lying Jews, and you'll see how they're rubbing it in your face. The Goyim are so freaking stupid. They'll buy any of their poisons, even the kids, when you go to shell, you know, shell shop and you see all those chocolates for children with all that aspartame in there. And you look at you, Mummy, I want this, I want this chocolate. They demand it. And we give it to them. Oh, yes, and the Jews, according to Finkelstein and the Catholics, they're criminal cartels. That's what they are, doing business with us and we are enjoying the sodomy because they've been sodomizing us for a long time. Fairy tales, Orpheus, Eurydike, Eros and Psyche, Jason and the Golden Fleece, the labours of Hercules, Sigurd and Bryn, Brynilt, Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, there too in forms which can be traced with ease we have the stories of the fairyland, the germs of the thousand and one tales of the Arabian Nights and the narratives of giants and dwarfs and enchanters of men and maidens transformed by magic arts into beasts and birds of riches hidden in the caves and bowels of the earth and guarded by trolls and gnomes of blessed lands where all is bright and sunny and where there is neither work nor cave. Whatever indeed is strange or fanciful or takes us straight from our grey, hard-working world into the sweet and peaceful country of once upon a time can be found in these ancient Hindu books. So he traces them back to Hindu sources, the Aryan race, has to be, because we are Aryans, and it has to do with this, we are now Pisceans, the ones incarnating now. We are the Pi Piscean race. That's our base core race. Yeah, Manly P. Hall teaches that. If you listen to his Astro Theology's audio files on the internet, you can download them. They are the best thing for learning everything I'm telling you here now. You can listen to it in your car and your iPod. Manly P. Hall, the greatest occultist of the 20th century. 
and he's got a lot of YouTube videos. Get into Manly P. Hall and get, man, the wisdom that oozes from Manly P. Hall. So all the heroes, it's all the sun. And they all mean the same things. That is the relation between the sun and the earth, the succession of day and night, of winter and summer, of storm and calm, of cloud and tempest, and golden sunshine, and bright blue day, sky. And this is the source from which we get our fairy stories, for underneath all of them, there are the same fanciful meanings, only changed and altered in the way of putting them by the lapse of ages of time, by the circumstances of different countries, and by the fancy of those who kept the wonderful tales alive without knowing what they meant. Why do we tell our people about Cinderella? Cinderella is the story of the sun and the dawn. Obscured by the envious clouds, her sister, and by her stepmother, the night, so she is Aurora the Dawn, and the fairy prince is the morning sun, ever pursuing her to claim her for his bride. And as his bride, the dawn, it's beautiful when you see the sun come up out of the dawn. <coughs> and why is it beautiful? Because the Virgo is at, at the other end. The sun is always born of a virgin. And when the sun comes up out of the blue sea of Pisces in the morning, that's water, and that's fire, so the fire, we already said yes means fire, means the sun. In Hebrew, yes means fire or the sun. That's that word which we say yes. And we shut our eyes when we pray to the Lord. Why? Yes. It's the light of the world. Look, they shall see me in the clouds. And when he comes up, out of the water, every day, born of a virgin, he comes up out of the mare, Maria, Jesus' mother, Mary. That's Mary. Maritime, marine, water. And if you get the alphabet and you put A over here and you go B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, 13th letter, middle, a, air, spirit, M, matter, marine, and N, next door, they are the waves, the glyph in Egyptian for water, and that's Aquarius, the water bearer, and Mem, the Hebrew letter Mem, in the middle, means water and nun means fish. In Italian, we have nuotare, to swim. It's all water. And then you go around and you see how the alphabet... Now, to learn all this, you need to read, <coughs> if you're interested in that subject, uh, Alvin Boyd Kuhn, like Manly P. Hall, another great occultist who teaches this, how the alphabet is here, and he's exposed this to the world. Um, and also, the numbers are in there. Um, the numbers, uh, which I'll go into later. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The numbers from one to nine are here. Huh? Oh, yeah, big time. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood gets devoured by the wolf and then comes out alive at the other side. The hunter, the darkness, the wolf. To learn how every myth and fairy tale, I would suggest you read these books. These are the best from the 1800s. You've got Myths and Myth Makers by John Fisk and fairy tales, their origin and meaning. When Perseus kills Medusa, Perseus is the sun and Medusa is the starlit night. The stars, they run away when the sun comes to town. You can't see the stars behind the sun. It takes up all the light. Sorry, I'm the hero of the show. That's why Christians act the way they do. 
the artificial Christians who believe in the historical Christ, which is the biggest lie ever told. And that lie needs to be exposed <coughs> by someone who knows, like, hmm, how about someone from the Piso family? The Piso family have had someone on the throne of Rome for the last 2,000 years. Someone of that family should know what they've done to us with the historical lie of Jesus Christ, and whoopsie do, we have Roman Piso who did his family tree history and everything and went way back to Arius Piso, um, Arius Calpurnius Piso, the guy who was behind Titus. Titus was the general who went to Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. Remember, Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 CE. This was the power behind that move. Get rid of those Jews and establish a world empire. And they'd done that with Augustus 40 years, oh, look, 80 years prior to that. When Julius Caesar, and by the way, J.C. and Julius Caesar corresponds to Jesus Christ. That is the Messiah. Anyway, this guy has exposed that when you read this, you'll be disgusted at how they did it and all the sexual innuendo in the Bible and all the stuff that they put in there to basically they've mutilated the Bible, but it's still a document in which you can find this truth. It's still there. It's just you have to look for it. But these people tampered with it and made the Christ story a literal story. They placed it in time. And that has been the greatest, greatest evil. And how much killing have they done ever since? Christopher Columbus, this country. Remember what they did to the blacks in this country, the Christians? They came here, it was, it was Christ, I'm telling you, they came with their crosses. No, not all of them. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. No, it's not. It's not. I'm not doing that. Do you understand? I'm not trying to do that. Do you, uh, is that, uh, or am I, do you think I should be a little bit more clear about that? Because I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to do that at all. But, but the reason why I say this is that I know the history. And I've done uh, seminars on this, how the Vatican has, owns the whole, the title to the whole planet. All the souls they're in, via the claim of right that they made through their papal bulls. And one of those papal bulls was written up in 1471, 11 years before Columbus set sail. And when Columbus came back, he signed contracts with the King of Portugal called the Treaty of Tesadillos, in which the Vatican Alexander, the Borgia Pope at the Vatican, blessed and accepted as the title for all the Americas. And that is how they've treated us. They do, they do own the world by virtue of that. And Frank O'Collins is the guy in Australia, that's the guy who's going to challenge them. Because that claim of right hasn't been challenged. They put on that ba papal bull that they own the world and all the souls they're in. And that's why our birth certificates are tied to that. And that's why they conquered these lands. That's why they had to come here and take this land. Because it's a business. It's a corporation. Those trusts are corporations. And they make money on them. And they've enslaved us by doing that. And they're running a business. All of this is a business. It's all a business. The Americas, everything. It's all business. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is the Christian power because the religion that they use, the deceivers in theology, is predominantly Christian. The fictional Christian. Because I'm teaching you true Christianity here. Christ is the Son. So I'm, I'm, when I say that, that's what I'm saying. He's not the only guy who's exposed that. So has um, this guy about Arius Calpurnicus, okay? So, and they've exposed, and, um, and let me tell you, if you read this book and you realise who's behind all the injury in the world, the banksters, right? But he, he's got a chapter in here, and it's called Monotheism, Money, Militarism, and Monarchy. That's the cabals that have joined in order to enslave us. But mono monotheism, please believe me, is our enemy. It's our enemy, monotheism. And the Christians, 
the, or the, those empire builders, those corporations and imperialists, did all their murders with the blessing of the Vatican. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that, um, you know, to polarise us and to, and to hate that what's happened, but it's, it's a business. And they cannot do it unless they have their priestcraft, i.e. the cardinals, blessing them. They can't do it unless there's a papal bull in the vault in the Vatican and to act on it. They can't do it. Like they can't hoodwink you when you go to court. When you go to court, everything about court is ecclesiastical. You're going to confess. It's the sacrament of penance. They've monetized money, sin. They've monetized sin. You're going into court to confess. It's a hearing. There's the clerk, the cleric. There's the scrivener notary. Scrivener means a writer of indulgences. All those writs, all those fines and summonses comes from a scrivener. Scrivener, venae, scribe means to write, and venae is an indulgence. They're telling you, they give you an attorney who turns you over. They give you a uh, prosecutor, prosecutus, representing one's own flesh, cutus, skin. So he goes and represents, he goes with a, a summons and he says, uh, Your Honour, I've got this um, charge against this uh, guy who's the beneficiary of the Sestri KV Trust, by the way. You're the beneficiary of that trust. Remember that when you go into court. And don't change roles with the judge because this is how they're hoodwinking you and they need the blessing of Saturn. They need the blessing, the Latin in the, in the courts because it's the church of Saturn, the grim reaper. That's why they wear black. It's all ecclesiastical. You're going there to confess and we are paying money to the Vatican and it's run by the Zionist Jews. Simple as that, through the private guilds. How they do that? Okay, I wasn't going to get into this because this is another presentation altogether. But, uh, oh, look at that. There's your local sheriff with a cross on his thing. There's a, that is an officer of the Inquisition, people. When you learn what Franco Collins is teaching, you'll see that's an officer of the Inquisition. That's the three crowns of the Pope, the tiara, the trirenium. They are the three Sestwi KV accounts that hold your soul. They are the kings of your soul. That takes away your personal property through your birth certificate. That takes away your real estate. This takes away your soul. And that's Pope Boniface in 1302 that established that papal bull. So when they go a-conquering, and the Temple Bar, that's in the city of London, that's the people who run the courts, who run that fictional court by the, uh, the false empire. Yes, magic, because they are doing their magic on you and they do a trick of it. There's the tiara. There's the Pope's wearing it. That's 666 because the trusts are called Sestwi KV. Sestwi is six. That's the king, the mark of the beast. The beast are you and I, the fools who have signed up to the system. And that's what they're doing. They're rubbing it in your face. That's why I say, and I say that I know uh, what Christians did. I'm talking about the imperialist corporate Christians. That's Christopher Columbus landing. Within a year, they wrote back to Spain saying, this man, on this island there were three million inhabitants. There are only 200 left. Your soldiers have butchered everyone. They just butchered and butchered and butchered and butchered and butchered. Right? Sure, there were pilgrims that went, that were running away. There were hermeticists that were running away to America and they were good people. It's full of good people. They're more good than bad. But it's the corporations that are bad and it's corporations that use Christianity to spellbind us. They can't do it legally without the blessing. That is the Pope in 1862, 1862. Pope right there blessing all these, the army of the Italians. It's scary when you think about it, but we have to bust this system. I mean, it needs to be busted. It needs to be either uh, ignored or dealt with. And, and I think that if, um, 
if you're, anyone was interested in really studying that aspect of our history, I've got some um, websites that would be very, very handy to go to. That's Frank O'Collins. And it all, they all connect to my website called universaltruthschool.com. Uh, universaltruthschool.com. And these are all Frank O'Collins. And this here teaches here where you can create an e ecclesiastical deed poll and you can collapse those trusts. So how you can Well, I actually have a DVD of the seminar I did exposing this, if you, can, if, if you would like to know this. I've got a DVD. Rome filmed it. Uh, I did it at the Nexus Forum meeting. Yes. Well, you don't have to write these because they are all connected to my Universal Truth School. You see the links on my Universal Truth School um, website all of these Franco Collins ones, but there's great reading in here. There's great stuff in there. Have a look at that. That is uh, a painting by Giorgio Vasari in 1572, Pope Gregory's army, uh, navy, 200 ships in the Bay of Naples, going to Turkey to, uh, with the Inquisition, uh, with the uh, Crusade against Turkey. 200 ships in the Bay of Naples. That's only a portion of, of the, the, the Navy. That was only a portion of it, 200 ships. That has morphed into the US Navy. It's, it's been morphing and morphing and morphing. And it's a corporation. They're just corporations. But they're getting sued and they're going to come down. The corporations will all be a thing of the past in the next few years. Believe me, I know this. It's going to happen. Okay, the Antichrist is, in fact, Christianity. It's the people saying, Lord, Lord, did we not perform many miracles in your name and did we not expel demons and did we not cast demons out and, and, uh, and do powerful miracles in, in your name, of which he replies, get away from me, workers of lawlessness, I've never known you. It's Christianity. Because what they're doing is they've counterfeited this true science. These... These are the 12 apostles. This is Christ. He, why is he the Lamb of God? Why is he the fisherman of men? Why is he the son of man, the scapegoat of Israel? Why is he a virgin, born of a virgin, the bread of life? Why is he, is he um, the Messiah of the tribe of Judah, the lion of Israel? Because the lion rules in summer. When the sun goes through that sign with Sirius in the back and there's the dog days, that's Jesus of the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's Jesus the twin. Have you seen any information about Jesus being a twin? No. Yes. See, that's... You have. Yes. Yes, you have. And I'm glad you have because it saves me having to uh, show pitch, pictures like this because I bring them along because I'm trying to... There's um, the 5th century mosaic in the imperial palace at Constantinople and it is Joseph... Joseph with Jesus and Geminus, meaning literally the twin. The concept is old. Jesus is the good beetle. How many church fathers called him the good beetle? The lion, the bread, the just one. Be wise as serpents and yet cautious as doves. I came not to bring peace but to bring division in the world and a sword. He carries the sword and that's the division that he brings. March the 25th, I mean sorry, December the 25th is the birthday of the sun. John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. Remember Elizabeth and Mary? Mary trudges off to see her cousin. And then John the Baptist, woo, he's six months old in the belly and he just jumps because Mary has the Son of God in her womb. Well, if he's six months older, he would have his birthday over here on June the 24th, St. John's Day. And is there a scripture in the Bible that says, he shall go on increasing... And I will go on decreasing. It's all there. When Jesus has died and resurrected, he's off, he goes to the beach, and he's going to wait around for 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights. From here to here is 40 days and 40 nights, roughly. From here to here is 40 days and 40 nights. 
roughly. They call it the 40 days and 40 nights. This is the wilderness, when Jesus goes into the wilderness. He gets bar baptised by January, Aquarius the water bearer, the wet month. At the age of 30, 30 degrees, January the Baptist, John the Baptist. So when you see all these days, and, and why did he say, uh, he shall go on increasing and I will go on decreasing? Well, it's, it's all there. When, when Jesus was walking on the beach after he was resurrected, he um, looks out in the Sea of Galilee and he sees his apostles and he says, Oi, uh, did you catch any fish? No. Put your net on the other side of the boat. Pulls it up. They pull the, the net up. Catch any fish? Yes, the nets are bursting. Bring them to shore. And he's got a little fish on the, on the beach and he's cooking his fish and he's got some bread and he's going to feed his disciples and tell them what to do before he sends to the heavens. This happens here. This story. And I'll explain that. It's all here. All the stories, Little Red Riding Hood, anyone. Name it. You name it and I'll interpret it with this. Or it will interpret it with this. Anyway, they said, uh, the nets are bursting. All of a sudden, they counted the fish. How many fish did they find? Does anyone know this story? It's amazing. And yet Christians read this and they, get, and they go, Christians, I'm not attacking Christians. Please understand. I've already established that. I'm, I'm attacking the way they interpret this beautiful wisdom. That's all I'm doing. Okay? Um, <clears throat> There was 153 fish. Ooh. Oh, I wonder what's uh, so interesting about 153. Well, Pythagoras knew what 153 was. So did Empedocles, his, his disciple. That's how many fish they caught. That's the number of the Veshika Pisces. That's the number of the fish. Two circles sharing a common radius. Circle one, dot, Circle two, and you have a fish swimming there. The measurement from there to there is 153. It's the measurement of the fish. 153 as opposed to 265. That's the 265, 153. It's the number of the fish. Empedocles knew it. All the sacred geometry teachers and, and the teachers of this holy science, physics, knew it. And so there it is embedded in the gospel. Why would, you, why would those 153... I mean, here's a gospel that's supposed to be teaching you how to ascend to the heavens and give you the science of salvation. And these 153 fish get in there and, hey, I want to get in the gospel. I'm, I want to be holy. I want, I want to be numbered in the Bible. It makes no sense, really, does it, to count the fish. But it shows you that they're hiding it in there. And the Piso, the Piso man brings that out. He brings out how they borrowed from Plato and how they borrowed from Hermes and put it in there. How many sacred days? Here, on the 6th of August, in the Bible, is when the sun is transfigured. It's the middle of summer. That's the transfiguration. On the 15th of August, you have the ascension of Mary. Wind up, five minutes. Um, and you have the ascension of Mary and, and then you have the nativity of Mary in September, on September the 8th. Well, the ascension is when the sun goes into Virgo and takes all her stars away. She's ascended. And then when the sun climbs another 30 degrees and comes out of the Virgin, then she's reborn again, the nativity of the Virgin. 25th of March, that's when Gabriel says to Mary, you shall conceive. 25th of March, count nine months, and the sun is born. That's the birthday of the sun, the 25th of December. Exactly nine months. And Pentecost, around about May Day, at 49 days, remember, that's when in the womb, here's conception, that's when the embryo becomes a fetus, and then five months later, the baby drops. Virgo, the belly. The baby drops, three months later it is born. This is the cycle of the birth of man. And it starts here on the 25th of March. And that's why they always celebrate the Passover 
of the lamb and they eat the lamb, the Jews. The three most important Jewish festivals of the um, pilgrimage were here, here and here. Equinoctial. Christmas is here. And there are literally, just go around, have a look at St. Paul's baptism, the 25th of January. Find out why St. Paul was converted over here. Uh, find out what it means when um, Jesus is born in a manger and there are shepherds and flocks outside. Well, that's because when Jesus is born on the 25th in Capricorn, in Capricorn there are two uh, constellations. One's called al Firk in Arabic, and it means the flock. And one's called Erei, and it means the shepherd. That's the shepherd outdoors. And he's born in a cave. Well, that's the cave. Capricorn is a cave. It's where Golgotha is, the place of skulls, Saturn being the ruler. All right. Anyway, um, there, there are a couple of wheels I think we've missed, but nonetheless, if you are to remember that this is the 24-hour day and the year and the points, the beginning points, we already discussed, this is the start. It was called Primus. It's right ascension. It's the start of the sine wave and it produces this beautiful effect. And when you look at it, it corresponds to physics. Cardinal fire, fixed fire, of course, it's the warmest part of the day, two to four, and it's the warmest part of the year, midsummer. So, of course, it's fixed. And then, of course, it mutates here on the 21st of December. Of course, that's mutable fire. Fire cannot enter into this quadrant because it's done its triplicity in the kingdom of Jesus, opposed to Satan's. And these are the two churches, the two brothers, and they fight with each other. Here, remember I showed you Orion was in here, in Taurus? Orion is killing the bull. He's slaying the bull. This is where our brain is, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. It's Cain killing Abel. Abel is the bull. Cain is Orion, the hero. Cain kills Abel, in that the, that the day kills the night, like Horace kills Set, but also it's talking about the right brain, uh, the, the left brain, who is the tyrant, the male side, killing the right brain. It's there in the stars. When you see Orion killing the bull, you know what it means, because that's what the occultists knew, and they taught that. They taught the inner story of what's going on here. I wish I had more time to do that and show you how the stars, how all these stars, is a beautiful story to tell and it's in your body, it's magic. And when you look up and you see, oh, there's my heart, there's my head, all in the skies. Uh, probably wrap up, wrap up with a question then and uh, for the film and then if anyone wants to stay back, I can go on. Are we allowed to do that, George? Repeat them? Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, like say what the question was. The book that you're showing here, uh, have them listed at the beginning of the website? Yes. If you, I have a video. Now, if you're interested in all this, I have some products that I'm selling. Um, now, that, that's $10. That's the book I was showing you before about the astrological body types. I'm selling that on my website anyway, but I've got a few of them here, three or four, and they're 10 bucks each. I have... $20 DVDs and this has 2 hours and 40 minutes of this with much, much different facts. Much different facts and, and uh, I do go into um, uh, stuff like uh, I show how all the, before I was telling you about all the symbols that they're using, that's the sun, that's Aries, that's the sun, that's the sun, all of these cars, they're all the sun, that's the winged disc, Viracocha, it's all the sun. Holden, there's Leo on the sun. Of course you're going to use the sun. There's Leo, there's the sun, the CIA. Lucent, Lucy in the sky with diamonds. The eye of the sun, Time Warner. There's the Elvis Presley's sun label. There's Elvis Presley, the king, Ra, on Ra, standing on the sun. Of course, you're not going to have some doofus symbol. 
All these corporations are going to have the sun. There's the black sun. Remember Saturn? Two suns and the Vesica Pisces in the middle. The sun, 72 leaves. Very important, number 72. The sun, Time Warner, the sun, life winking at you, the sun, the newspaper, the sun, Vodafone, 666, borrowed from the Ku Klux Klan, and they're telling you in the face and they're laughing at you, buy our products please, Hyatt, the sun, the pyramid, the sun, disc over, the sun, the stars, the sun, the sun, cancer, which is the sun, the unicorn, cancer, and the moon, and this, the moon is always white, the bride, and the sun is golden, Aquarius, the water, Volvo, male and female, vulva, just put an A on the end of that, there's Mars having sex with Venus's orbit, Mars is very elliptical, Venus is softer, and that's the sun, Toyota, there's the sun, Mazda and Nissan all mean March because the sun, whoops, the sun is passing over the equator. Nisan, the month of strength. McDonald's used the, 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 tor, the, the, the Aries symbol. Nike, the rings of, the, of Neptune, Saturn. Remember the E, ether. They do always do something with the E. They always make it look you know, oh, let's uh, shove the E in your face, but you don't know what's going on, do you? It's ether, or it's the fifth essence, one, two, three, four, five, or the fifth letter of the alphabet, five. They're telling you about L, five. See the five? Because it's the fifth essence, the quintessence. Double X, Walmart, that's the sun, the Union Jack, Jack means the sun, sun, that's the sun. The four stars. What's, what are the four stars? Who can guess which are the four stars? Aldebaran. Regulus. Antares. Formal out. Now, just one more thing and then I'll leave that. <laughs> the Korean flag. Spirit and matter. Remember the A and the M? That's fire. That's water. Water. Mem. Marine. Earth, fire, air and water. The four polarities. It's all science. All of these symbols are science. We've forgotten the meaning. They're all science. There's the man. Aries on the head. Pisces at the feet. There is a scene, a Christian scene, of Mary being announced that she will be a virgin. Uh, she'll be, uh, she's a virgin, she'll be, uh, she'll conceive. It's in Egypt, in Luxor, in the temple of Luxor. And the three wise men coming to do obeisance to the cloud. It was, it was covered in stucco for thousands of years. They've just recently uncovered it in the last century. And there it is, there's the, the, the nativity scene of Christ. There's Leonardo da Vinci, the Last Supper. There's Jesus with his three seasons, four seasons of three clusters. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. There's Dionysus with his 12 helpers. There's Horus coming up from the horizon. Horus, Horus has risen. The horizon. There's the 12. I everywhere you see the 12. There's always 12. And they say, these deniers that watch Zeitgeist and try to debunk Zeitgeist on the internet, I laugh at these fools. When I see them, I think, you don't know half the science that you're, you're just muddying it with your stupidity. They're trying to dethrone or debunk Zeitgeist who's talking about all of this. And, the, and they said there that Mithras had 12, 12 helpers. Well, the guy said, plain clear, says, nowhere in history have we ever found any evidence of Mithras having 12 helpers. There it is. Is that the one? No, that's Horus. Um, I probably don't have the one of Mithras, but have a look at the guy who did... <laughs> have a look at the guy who debunks the debunker, and he's got the picture there. You can get it on Google. Just go in Google Images. Mithras and his 12 disciples, and it'll pop up. And this guy debunking Zeitgeist, and he says, there's no evidence in the world. Thank you.